jazz, blues, R&B, rock and roll, funk, disco, gospel, hip-hop, these genres form the backbone to modern-day American music and music abroad. Worldwide, modern-day music is American music. America has such a strong cultural influence on the rest of the world to the point where almost everyone listens to American music. What do all of these genres have in common? Are they all descended from the same source? Surely not, they're all so different. Well, actually, they are all from the same people group. All the genres were pioneered by the American descendants of those from Africa. So why is African American music so relevant in today's modern selection of songs? We have to start from the beginning. When Britain colonized America, they didn't actually want to do the work themselves. Instead, they imported slaves from Africa to mainly the South. It's important to note that even though Africa is one of the most diverse continents on Earth, after a generation or so, most slaves did not know where their ancestors were from, thus they created a separate, unified identity with the other slaves. This tragic series of events has ultimately brought us to the African-dominated music scene, however. On these fields, the Africans had nothing, no possessions, no land, and especially no musical instruments. But they did have each other, and it was through these work bonds where music developed. Back in Western and Sub-Saharan Africa, many different types of drums and beats were used for music. This contrasted to European music, which was about melody at this point in time. This rhythm was built into the Africans that came over, and on the long days on the field, they would sing work songs. Since there are no instruments, these songs relied on spoken word. The most common element of these work songs was the call and response, where someone would call out a line and the others would respond with another or the same. Other elements included field haulers and even beatboxing. It is these work songs that directly influenced and transformed into the next great African genre. Christianity was the American religion in the 17 and 1800s. Many Africans who had a folk religion background converted to Christianity after a generation or two. However, this version of Christianity was different. Different groups handled it in different ways, but many combined the folk religions with Christianity, creating hybrid religions like voodoo, and others reinterpreted Christianity in a way that had meaning to African Americans in the situation they were in. It's not easy to believe in a divine good when your people are enslaved. Out of this came spirituals who were the ones to sing in this new work song, Christian Gospel Hybrid. Unlike white gospel music, this new folk gospel music involved dancing and upbeat energy. They still used the call and response method along with hand clapping and foot stomping. After the second great revival where Protestantism, especially among African Americans, had a, you guessed it, great revival, gospel music was engraved into African American culture. And after the Civil War, African American culture changed drastically. They are finally free, although in many places like the South, still segregated. Gospel music still spread like wildfire, however, with Jubilee troops and barbershop quartets forming and touring the country. The vocal elements of gospel music were center stage to these and continued to be a main element of African American music for the rest of history. During the 1800s, an increasing number of black musicians learned to play European instruments, infusing the styles of rhythm and especially upbeat gospel into the songs. In particular, European brass instruments like the trumpet, trombone, and saxophone, as well as the bass and guitar caught on the black community. Out of these new instruments and instrumental style, jazz and the blues were born. The difference right now was slim, but as the name suggests, jazz was happier than the blues. The American population couldn't tell the difference and lumped both into a category called race music. Then in New Orleans, a city known for the fusion of black, white, Caribbean, French, and English cultures, came a new style of jazz, this time incorporating drums, piano, and brass. New Orleans was where jazz exploded. And the title, Someday. America done with World War II was about to embark on its jazz age, pioneered by this New Orleans style of jazz. Major cities across the USA with large black communities accepted jazz into their cities. This culminated in America's biggest city, New York, and Harlem accepting jazz, starting the Harlem Renaissance, a reawakening of black culture, arts, and civil rights. It gave rise to black art, literature, religion, and especially jazz. Visit New York in the 1920s and you'll see jazz is THE hottest music. Some artists who defined the genre were Duke Ellington, Ella Fitzgerald, and of course, the GOAT, Louis Armstrong. Sub-genres eventually split off like swing, ragtime, bebop, and R&B. 
American jazz kept expanding and diverging into different styles until about the 60s when jazz had officially died from mainstream eyes. It's now the 1940s, America is going through a world-changing war, last time this happened, American culture and music changed radically. Will that happen again? Yep. This time around, it was R&B fused with a strong backbeat to create a genre called rock and roll. New technologies like the electric guitar, microphone, and amplifier were essential to the genre. Drums were also very prominent and getting louder. This music came at a time when more black and white Americans were living together than ever before. Both black and white Americans started emulating each other's styles, which culminated in an American style. This was evident by the fact that even though rock and roll started as black music and had very popular artists like Chuck Berry, Bo Diddley, and Jimi Hendrix, but white artists were also popular too, like the King of Rock, Elvis Presley, Bill Haley, and Bruce Springsteen. Since rock and roll was loved by all Americans, it is a reason why the civil rights movement happened at the peak of rock and roll. Later, more smooth melodic music and beats were incorporated into rock, and by the 70s, funk was born. Musicians like George Clinton, Stevie Wonder, and the Jackson 5 were made in this era. When the 80s came, pop, funk, and disco were mainstream with many black artists at the front of it, like Prince, Lionel Richie, Tina Turner, and Whitney Houston. But no one was quite as big as Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson was the biggest star ever. That is not a joke or exaggeration. He was the most popular man in the world in the 1980s. He sold the world's best sung album at almost 50 million copies, whereas the next largest sold 40 million copies. He single-handedly defined pop music by infusing elements of funk, soul, and jazz into it. He was the big African influence in pop. But there's one more movement before we're at the modern day. While contemporary R&B continued to the modern day, creating artists like Rihanna, Beyonce, and Usher, a new raw movement focused on rhythm and wordplay was forming. In the late 70s, a new genre was born out of the Bronx called hip-hop, although at this time it was very similar to funk. Percussion and rebellious lyrics came to define the genre over time. It became particularly popular in large urban centers like New York, Chicago, Atlanta, Detroit, and Los Angeles, which later became its main exporters. In the late 80s, hip-hop really took off after Run DMC and the Beastie Boys came onto stage. From there, the supposed golden age of hip-hop happened, with artists like LL Cool J, Queen Latifah, and Salt and Peppa. Rap took a different outlook in the 90s after gangster rap took over. Now, the genre is at its core about urban life and the hardships of it. Rappers on the East Coast and West Coast blew up, like the notorious B.I.G., Wu-Tang Clan, Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, and the face of the genre, Tupac Shakur. The genre remained rather the same until the 2010s when trap music defined the hip-hop world. Popular modern-day artists include Jay-Z, Lil Wayne, Kanye West, and Kendrick Lamar. From its origins in work music to upbeat jazz music to the modern day trap music, black made music has managed to keep a top spot in America's charts for about a hundred years now. What made it so uncaptivating to the majority? White America, however. Part of it is interest for foreign cultures. America is mainly a nation of immigrants, so cultures from all around the world are interested in one another. Part of it is America's identity as a modern nation. African music didn't blow up until after World War I, when America didn't exactly want to emulate themselves after the Europeans who just killed 20 million people. And part of it is just the fact that all the African originated genres heavily incorporated rhythm and beat, something the European genres forgot about. Gospel came directly from work songs. When European instruments were added, it became jazz. Then almost every major genre was a direct descendant of jazz, splitting off into unrecognizable beats. So whether it's gospel, soul, jazz, funk, rock, pop, swing, disco, R&B, rap, or trap, America's music culture must thank its African influence for straight up birthing it. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and share to any of your friends that like music. Thank you so much for watching the whole thing.